Yo guys, what's going on? Got some English 1.5 action for you guys. Now this is every set including BT1, 2, 3, as well as all six of the starter decks. You'll see I actually do have one of the starter deck cards as the uh, one cost blocker uh, Tyranomon, Dark Tyranomon maybe. Uh, anyways, you guys know what I mean. So I'm playing uh, this format. And uh, I am playing a Ragnarord Mon Black deck. I really like Ragnarord Black uh, versus Red. Red is a very aggressive build, and I, I honestly think if you're gonna play Ragnarord Mon, a singular color like mono color is probably the most consistent way, right? If you're playing red, you can play Greymon and you know um, Terra Force and just a lot of like aggressive and security attack boosting cards to just you know OTK with Ragnarok. So it's really cool. I do like the um, you know the versatile nature of black. You got a lot of blockers. Uh, you'll see how the Tyranomon. You got things like Toy Agumon uh, for the reboot as well as uh, you know Craniumon and just lots of versatile defensive cards as well. So you know you can kind of stall a little bit and, you know, uh, set up for your Ragnalort a little bit easier, as well as the d digivolve effects from, you know, the Ludum Online, as well as maybe if you're playing Infinity Cannon or something. But anyways, I'm playing against my man Joe Doby up top. He's playing green. Uh, Shoutouts to him. He's also a Digimon YouTuber. I'll have his link in the description below if you're interested. Uh, so he's actually uh, playing a green 1.5, which is a very scary deck, especially... After we get, you know, the Hercules Kabuterimon, we get uh, Union Impact's, uh, you, what's it called? Uh, hidden Hidden Potential, that that crazy-ass card. Um, anyway, so he's actually playing like a green-purple mix, which is kind of crazy. This man loves my Otismon. This guy is like a purple at heart, man. Arakanimon's a really cool card because she is a, you know, support card for both purple and green. You can Digivolve her on top of a green Digimon, and it just helps you get Malamai Otismon. Malamai Otismon is a scary-ass card, dude. <laughs> that guy's 12,000 with piercing, and every time, you know, he destroys something, uh, you know, you gain memory. So I have the Metal Greymon on field I'm going to attack over his Arukenimon and just setting up with the Durandamon. Luckily I do have uh, multiple Ragnalords in hand, I got two in hand, as well as I just drew into the Bry Ludramon, Bry Ludamon, however you guys, <laughs> however you say that uh, card's name. And anyway, so I got set up and luckily I will be able to go into Ragnalord hopefully and then you know get that plus three memory boost. He is going to Digivolve. Uh, I f didn't see what the rookie was, my bad. And then <laughs> he is going to Digivolve into Stingmon and then play that Wormmon. Wormmon's an interesting card. Whenever he is destroyed, he kind of acts like a purple card. So it's, it's really cool in, the, in this deck. You get to add a level 5 or 6 Digimon, uh, you know, reveal top 3 and add a 5 or 6 to your hand. So I'm just going to go ahead and Digivolve straight into Ragnarok. Ragnarok is a 3 cost level 6, which is pretty cheap already. But he has that effect where if you have Durandamon or Bryludamon in your hand, you can attach that card from your hand to Ragnalord, you'll gain three memory. And then now I'm, we're checking all these crazy effects. This is this is what Ragnalord Turbo is all about. You're really just trying to set up this supreme boss monster with like a shit ton of effects, right? He's got a security attack plus one and reboot just inherently. He's got piercing from the Durandamon. He's got blocker from the Bryludramon, which is insane because he's he's got reboot, right? So I'll be able to attack for that. And then I've also got the D Digivolve from the Tyaludamon. Well, unfortunately, he doesn't have anything for me to do digivolve but then i also have security attack plus one uh from the metal graymon so i'm going to check three cards uh and then uh, you know, he also gains a thousand from kapurimon in case that mattered uh and then i'm going to check three cards and then just digivolve into that numamon on top of my toy agumon which was rested uh thanks to his flower cannon unfortunately but it, it doesn't matter and anyways i'm just going to play the godsmon in case he just has some shenanigans and i just, just want to protect my cards um now uh ragnarok does actually restand I, I forgot for a second there he does restand he becomes active again because he does have that reboot ability where he will become active during my opponent's active phase so now he is a 14,000 blocker on my opponent's turn. So he's just an insanely offensive and defensive card. Now my opponent is going to actually attack with the Okumon. He did forget, um, in this instance, I think he forgot that the Bry Ludermon had, like, gives Ragnarok the inherited blocker ability. It's just so much to keep track of. This card's ridiculous. So, uh, he is actually a blocker, so I'm going to save my Numamon there. Like, Numamon could have died, but I, like, might as well just save him. I don't think he had anything else at that point to threaten my Ragnarok, so I'm just going to go ahead and block. And he's going to attack with the Vegemon as well. I was debating the block, and I was like, yeah, I, I might as well, because I, you know, I got the blocker in Ragnarok for next turn, and then I just want to keep my champion on field in case, um, you know, I want to set up for another Ragnarok Mon, because I do have that and the Durandamon hand, and then as well as the Zubamon, and 
and loot them on so I can dig deeper for those legend arm uh, cards in my deck if I do want to play those. So my Digimon are going to become active and then I'm going to flip over that Kakemon. <laughs> Tried to cheat there for a second but then I'm going to realize I need a black Digimon so I'm going to Digivolve the Ludomon. Um, now, I have a lot of memory because he did actually hard play the Cherrymon last turn. And the unfortunate thing about dealing with Ragnarmon is like, because I have the piercing, it doesn't matter if he blocks or not. Because either way, I'm going to check all of the security cards. Now, I did run into a Grand Kuwagamon. Uh, luckily for me, it's only 11,000 Ragnarmon. It's 15,000 currently. So I'm just going to check the remainder of his security cards. He does have the Cherrymon still, so I'm not going to attack with the Numamon. And I'm going to hard play these. Zubamon for my hand. Zubamon has an amazing ability where you get to reveal the top five and add any Ragnalord and a Legend Arms Digimon to your hand. So it's a potential plus two, in this case just a plus one, which is more than enough, uh, right? So I'm just going to add that Bry Ludamon in case I need it. Don't think I will. And then, you know, I could play the Tai Chi in case I want to give Ragnalord even more security piercing powers. It's unnecessary at this point uh, because my opponent does have zero security. So now I'm just going to play a blocker. Um, I'm going to leave my opponent with one memory. I'm just going to hard play that Dark Tyranomon. Uh, like I said, the tie was unnecessary. I don't need three memory next turn. I've got so many Digimon. And with just one memory, I really don't think there is a way for him to come back from this. So he's just going to Digivolve the Tentamon and the Digivolve that Vegemon on top of him. And he's just got the lone Cherrymon versus five of my Digimon. Now, he does hit me with the uh, Mega Electro Shocker. Uh, so it's actually going to rest my Ragnalord. Uh, but that is just going to be game. Not much he can do about that. So, game two. Uh, my opponent, Joe Doby, is going to start. He is going to digivolve into the Tentomon and then just hard play that Wormmon and potentially trying to get, you know, dig deeper into the deck, get the Arukenimon, get the Malamiotismon, and just, uh, you know, set up for his big play. So, I'm going to digivolve into my Toyogamon. Then, on top of that, I'm going to place my. Uh, Dark Tyranomon and Dark Tyranomon, uh, luckily, you know, it, it is a blocker, but it's also a one cost, which is super nice in case I, you know, I want to conserve my memory and I just want to go into Ragnarok as cheaply as possible. So I'm just going to Digivolve, uh, what is that, the something, La Raiji Ludomon, that guy, I'm going to Digivolve Raiji Ludomon uh, into my raising area and then my opponent will start his turn with one memory. He's going to just go ahead and attack with the Wormon, that's the best thing to do in this scenario because I don't have any blockers and then he is going to die so reveals lots of powerful cards right there uh he could add a five or six i believe um so he is just going to add the malamiotis and then trash the rest and then Wormon's going to die, and then he could also attack with the Tentamon, not sure if he's going to do that, I probably wouldn't, yeah, so he's just going to digivolve uh, that Stingmon, and next turn I really would like to digivolve into my uh, what's it called, the Durandum on there, and then just go straight into Ragnarok. Unfortunately, I don't have both Megas in hand, and then here I was debating whether or not to just leave, uh, him in the raising area, because the thing about playing this Ragnarok Turbo, if your opponent stops you, like, like, Ragnarok himself is almost unkillable, but if your opponent stops you, like, while you're trying to build up to him, it can kind of hurt, especially because I've, I've used, like, two or three turns just trying to build up to Durandum on, and the next turn I'll finally be able to go Ragnarok, so it might have been a better play just to leave nothing on field and then just keep the Duranamon in my raising area, especially because I don't have a rookie like in my hand. I, I could draw in one next turn, but I don't, I'm not guaranteed one. So it might've just been like a waste of a raising phase anyways. Um, but anyways, I'm just going to bring that Duranamon out and then he's going to attack with the Okuamon, which unfortunately for him, Okuamon's only 6,000. Metal Greymon, the card he ran into security is 7,000. So that's awesome for me. Uh, his Okuamon does, uh, you know, bite the dust, go into the trash. And then he is just going to play that Wormmon straight from his hand. And then now I'm going to draw a god triple Ragnarok in my hand as well well as enough memory to be able to digivolve into him. So I'm just going to go ahead and go into the Ragnarok Mon for three digivolve draw one and then now he's got piercing, he has got D digivolve minus one whenever he attacks and then I will also gain a memory uh, from the Kakin Mon whenever he does attack uh, because he is level seven and then uh, you know I got double reboot from the Toy Agumon and the um, you know Ragnarok there. So that is only going to check two cards I believe. Uh, it does also have piercing so if he puts up 
up a blocker, uh, I'm going to be able to deal with it. And then I'm going to check my trash for a second here. Uh, no rookies, unfortunately. So I'm probably just going to, I think I would hard play Numamon here. It's the lowest cost I have. And Numamon's nice because while he is a champion, he has got the play cost of a rookie. So that's super cool. So I'm just going to play Numamon and then my opponent's not going to be left with too much memory. And the next turn, I'll be able to maybe Digivolve into Raiju Ludumon or the Metal Greymon. And then if I happen to draw into a Mega Boom, awesome. I got another Ragnalord Mon play set up. Now, my opponent is going to run into uh, security that Dark Tyranomon with his Wormon, reveal the top three. And then we saw lots of interesting cards. He's actually playing Necrophobia, which is kind of cool. Uh, especially because I can bring back Arukenimon, just go straight into Malamyotismon with that. So he's going to attack with the Gargamon, and then run into that Brywell Ludramon in my security. Unfortunately, that guy's not in my hand. That would be amazing if he was. And then hard play the Puppetmon for 11, leaving me at 8 memory. And then unfortunately now he rested my Ragnalord, so it's not going to be able to become active during my current active phase right during this active phase of this turn and then next turn um, you know, I, I don't have to worry about him attacking over it, because in this format, <laughs> there's no Chaos Mon, there's no, um, well, like, I don't think he's playing Hercules Cobbitary Mon, or if he is, it might take him time to set up, but I don't have to worry about his Puppet Mon killing my Ragnarok anyways, so I'm just going to Digivolve into that Haguru Mon, and then now I'm just really trying to dig deeper, because I don't have any level 7, uh, level 6s in my hands, so there they all are, um, I'm going to reveal the top 5, either add the Brywell Ludramon or the Dranamon, I'm going to opt for the Blocker Inherited Effect, so... I'm going to add those, uh, add that to my hand, and then put the rest of those cards back on the bottom of my deck. So then now I'm going to Digivolve straight into the Raiji Ludamon, which is awesome because, um, you know, Numamon is a champion, so I'll be able to do that, and then use another three memory to Digivolve into Bribal Ludramon. And um, with only one. Uh, now, I, I could have done something differently, right? I could have gone Ragnalord. Uh, I think I, I literally forgot for a second that I was like, oh, I want another blocker on field. But I could have just Digivolve Ragnalord, and then that would have been let me block his Puppet Mon. That would have been a way better play. Because like, literally right there, I have the blocker inherited effect. Now, I wouldn't have been able to gain three memory, but like I have double Ragnalord in my hand, so I could have just, you know, done the same thing another turn. So yeah, that was like kind of a misplay. It has probably been better to just Digivolve Ragnalord, especially because um, he wouldn't, have, yeah, it would have saved me a security for sure. Okay, so anyway, so he's going to just attack with that Puppemon. Does actually gain a memory from that. And then he's going to use that to Digivolve into Vegemon. Then he's going to play the Aruramon straight from his hand. Now, I have four Digimon on field, right? And Ragnarok has a security attack plus one plus piercing. So I'm going to hit his Puppetmon and then check a double security, right? I also actually do gain a memory here. I should have gained a memory. So then I'm going to run into the Agumon as well as the Mimi. And then, unfortunately for me, I run into the Mega Electroshocker. This card is ridiculous in security. Rests both of my Digimon. That's so freaking stupid. Oh, my God. So, I, I literally, I almost had game right there. Now, what I could do right now is just Digivolve straight into Ragnalord, and then now I will have a 14,000 blocker on field. So I've got I've got one blocker, which will restand, right? The Ragnalord will restand both of them, and then I've got one blocker. But unfortunately, if I had done that play where I had blocked the Puppetmon, things could have turned out differently. So unfortunately, uh, because of that, and then because of the Mega Electro Shocker, I did actually end up losing this game. Um, so yeah, so that was an unfortunate, that was a very close game. That was a crazy card in security. Um, so my opponent, my opponent, yeah, my opponent is just going to, you know, flower cannon, rest my blocker, and like, you know, attack for game. So that's going to be game two. So game three, um, I'm going to start because I did actually end up losing. So I'm just going to hatch the Kakinmon in my raising area, my breeding area. And then Digivolve into the Gatsumon for zero, and then Digivolve into Numumon. A little bit unfortunate, I did have to use a blocker. Uh, I did really want that extra draw, so uh, just going to Numumon is fine. And then it does actually leave my opponent with uh, one memory, um, which he's going to use to Digivolve in Stingmon, and then play the Mimi from his hand. So now he does actually have purple option cards um, like online if he has. I don't think he's playing Trump Sword or anything, but you know, you never know. <laughs> you never know with these decks. He could be playing anything. So I'm just going to Digivolve into that Metal Greymon after bringing him out again. It might have been a little bit better 
just to keep him in the raising area. Um, so I'm going to go again after he digivolves into that Akumon. Again, we're just playing that game back and forth, leaving your opponent with one memory. So I'm going to go and then most, yeah, I'm probably just going to go straight into Bridal Ludramon. And then now I have Ragnalord set up. I've got another Bridal Ludramon, unfortunately not the Durandamon. Um, but either way, I'll be able to gain three memory if nothing happens to my Bridal Ludramon. And then, um, you know, I'll be able to hit him with a Ragnalord uh, the following turn. So we're actually going to see a Grand Kuwagamon here. Grand Kuwagamon is a very scary card. Uh, that guy actually gains, well, first of all, he gets piercing. Second of all, he gains, I, th I think it's like 4,000 or 5,000. It's like a crazy amount. Yeah, 4,000 DP during your turn. So he becomes 15,000, which is enough to kill Ragnarok. So I'm going to Digivolve, and then, um, luckily, that was so lucky, I drew the Durandamon off of the, um, you know, off of the draw, and then I'm going to gain that three memory. Now, I am going to attack here, uh, because I do have, I do have a blocker in my hand, so I'll be able to, you know, protect from Grand Quagmon, and then that is going to check uh, three cards, and then I'm also going to gain a memory, because the security attack plus one from both Ragnar and the Metal Greymon, and then as well as the effect from Kakinmon, so triple check, and then now he has piercing, and we have a 14,000 blocker established, um, so now, uh, you know, I, I'm in a good position, um, so I'm going to be able to do that, you know, check three of his security cards, uh, and then most likely I would probably, yeah, digivolve into the Dark Tyranomon there because, you know, Grand Kuagamon will be very freaking strong, very scarily strong, um, during his next turn. And then I'm going to digivolve into the Raiju Ludamon. Now, looking back at this, I don't know why. <laughs> I don't know why I did that. Feel free to roast me in the comments. But, like, I, I promise you guys, I am trying to do my best. I'm trying to learn this game as best I can. And that, for some reason, that was just, like, a lapse in judgment. I, I don't know why. Maybe, maybe I thought I was like, okay, I can just establish another Ragnarok. I literally should have just either hard played... The Dark Tyranimon, or just Digivolve him, right? I had the Hagurumon. There was no reason to go into the Raiju Ludamon. That would have saved me that and probably, um, you know, won me the game much quicker. Uh, because, you know, if I, if I hadn't made that mistake. But anyways, I'm going to be punished for bad plays, you know. <laughs> it, it happens. So he's just going to um, attack with the Grand Quagamon, which is 15,000 with piercing. So he's going to kill the Ragnalord and then hit me um, hit me for one security check. And then he's going to uh, attempt to play the Necrophobia. He actually doesn't have uh, any purple option or purple Digimon in his grave right now. And then we are going to see a Puppetmon played for 11, resting my Raiju Ludamon. So in case, uh, you know, I do go into Ragnalord, it will be able to become active during his turn, but not, like, you know, my turn, and I won't be able to attack. So, um, you know, he's going to play that Puppetmon. I'm going to Digivolve into the Toy Agumon. And I do have lots of memory. I've got eight memory to work with. And I have the setup in my hand. Unfortunately, there is a Ragnarok in my graveyard. Uh, or, sorry, my trash. Um, but this is where the Metal Mamemon, uh, which is a... I, I believe that's out of BT3 Union Impact. I don't think it's in English 1.0. Um, but anyway, so that, that card is really cool, right? So I'm just going to Digivolve into the Dark Tyranomon. Finally, I should have Digivolved that a long time ago. I'm going to play the Hagurumon. I could Digivolve again. Um, into so the Tyludamon and then I'm going to Digivolve into the Metal Mamemons to be able to not only set up right because now I've got double ultimates uh, on the field I'm going to be able to add a virus level 7 from my trash straight to my hand so actually Ragnalord Mon does fit that criteria so now I've got the setup as long as I have enough memory the following turn I'll be able to go either Durandamon or Bryoludamon and then go into Ragnalord and then get both the inherited effects to get the plus 3 memory and probably be able to go for games. So we're going to see Grand Kuagamon attack again. I'm going to block that because I do want to, um, you know, keep my uh, Raiju Ludamon attack. And unfortunately for my opponent, this is exactly what I needed. I needed to guarantee myself three memory next turn. And then I also needed, well, maybe not needed, but having the ability to get another security check. <laughs> it's, it's a little bit unnecessary at this point, right? My opponent only has uh, two security cards, but it's nice regardless. So anyway, Anyways, we're going to see the red tie played and then my opponent is going to do some stuff and so next turn I can yeah I can just 
go for the Ragnarok setup. So we're going to see an Aruramon played, and then he's still got three memory to work with, uh, which is scary, but especially for green. Green can do a lot with just a little bit of memory, you know, post, um, you know, Union Impact with 1.5 Digivolve into the Arucanimon, which actually does cost three. Um, yeah, so it costs three. And that indicates to me he might have a Malamai Otismon hand, and if he gets that Malamai Otismon on top of the Grand Koagmon, this is a GG. Um, there's no way I'm coming back from that. So uh, he is going to just Digivolve that Arukenimon, and then Digivolve straight into the Malamai Otismon, which is interesting. He probably doesn't want to wait until like the following turn, uh, but 5 is very costly. Anyway, so I'm just going to bring out the Toy Agumon there, and luckily for me, I've got so much memory to work with, so I think I can turn this game around. So I'm just going to Digivolve straight into the Brywell Ludomon for 3, Drawing into yet another Duranamon, Digivolve straight into Ragnalordmon, and then use his ability to, uh, you know, stack the Duranamon on top, and then gaining three memories, so essentially a zero Digivolution cost. Now with tons of awesome effects, so I've got the D Digivolve minus one, as well as the Piercing, and he is a 14,000 blocker. Plus, uh, he will check three security cards, only has two, but anyway, so I was debating which one to attack, right? I could attack the Puppetmon, still check the security, and then D Digivolve the Grand Kuwagamon, but that was like, no. I really don't want to like leave an ultimate on field. Anyways, I'm just going to run into that and then my toy Agumon is going to attack for game. So that's going to be the game guys. Let me know if you enjoyed. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you guys next time.